And welcome back to the crochet crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the wee crochet moccasins. These are super super cute and these are for three to six months of age. Today we're going to be working on this together. So in today's pattern we have all the instructions that you need. There's actually some pom-poms that are added onto it. I'm going to leave it to you to find another tutorial in order to make pom-poms and I would probably use a pom-pom maker in order to have it. But of course on page number two they always like to be very helpful and that you can use your fingers and it explains how to do it as well. So what we're going to be doing today is that we're going to start off in the bottom of the moccasins. Both are the same so it doesn't matter if it's right or left. And what we're going to be doing is that we're going to start off with the sole and then work ourselves up the side and then across the top and then do the cuffs at the very top. It's actually a pretty easy pattern but what I've done is that I've gone a step further for you. I've created two diagrams that will be available on the crochetcrowd.com under the same pattern and what we're going to do is start off in the center and work our way around the center chain and we'll keep on working and working. I'll explain this as we go and then once we get to a certain point which we, would be round number six we're then going to then take this one here which is the same as round number six and we're going to start decreasing and this is the top of the, uh, the toes area. The main thing in this whole thing and I've done booties before where I've lost the center line of the top of the booty. So we're gonna be able to have a stitch marker. So what I want you to do is grab a spare piece of yarn that you don't mind wasting and you're gonna be able to mark this uh, toe marker as we go around so that you can always know where the, the absolute front of the foot will be. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So today's pattern asks you to use Softy Baby and it's really cool. This is a different line of Softy Baby but it's the same gauge of yarn and it's called Softy Baby Colors and you can see it's actually really quite neat. So the one that they're working with is Bernat Softy Baby which is more of a solid uh, different line than this one. So um, it's actually really quite fun. You'll need a four millimeter size G crochet hook in order to play today and just a stitch marker in order to help you keep an eye on the front foot. So let's uh, go back to the diagram and let's get you started on round number one. So in round number one we're going to start off with chaining of nine and then we're going to single crochet second chain from the hook and then single crochet ourselves back across this chain and on the very last chain that you have you will put in three single crochets and this will force it to go around and then you'll be single crocheting along the underside of the same chain and then just joining it when you come back. So the whole idea is that round number one is about establishing the circle here and then what we can see in round number two when we get there is that you'll see that it asks us to put more stitches near the front. So this will make the front of the foot wider than the back at this particular point and then we continue to do that as we work ourselves around the rows. And then once you get on to then row number, uh, round number four, five, and six it's one single crochet into the back loops as you go. The trick is is that in number six we have to turn our work and go in the other direction as we do that and that's not a big deal and that's what creates the beautiful um, texture that you see within the project. So let's move along to round number one. So let's get started and create a slip knot and let's insert our four millimeter size G crochet hook into the slip knot and pull. So I want you to total chain of nine. So we're gonna do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So this is the center of the foot on the bottom. So second chain from the hook. So just count back. So one and two go to the second chain and then just go into the back loop only of that chain. I want you to single crochet and what I'm gonna ask you to do is just single crochet yourself across the chain until you get to the very last one. The trick is is that there's it's all about the counting but sometimes you can just look at things like now and just being able to figure it out real quick. So the last chain is gonna have the three single crochets in it that force the chain to turn upside down. Okay, so I'm continuing to work on the back loops only of the chain and the last chain is right here. So what I want to do in the last one is that I wanna put in three single crochets. So I'm gonna go one and then do it again and this will naturally start turning two and do it again for three. And this was the toe area. So take this straggler here and lay it down on top of the line and go to the very first one on the other side and I want you to single crochet the next six in a row. So we're gonna go one and two 
and the reason why I'm putting that other one on top here is so that you can trap it in. This is gonna be three. This is four. And this is five. And I think that's in long enough so I'm just gonna let that come to the back. That was five and then this is six. And you have one last stitch left which is the, gonna be the turn on the back side. So coming into the very final one here we're going to apply two single crochets in there. So one and two. And I want to join this to the top of the first one that you had started with, with a slip stitch. And if you're not really sure which one it is, you could just count it back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So that was the sixth one there. So this one here is where you're gonna join, which is the seventh. And just join it and that was round number one. So now we're about to go up to round number two. So round number two we're gonna start off with chaining a two and it doesn't count as a stitch and we're gonna half double crochet into the one, two, three, four, five, and six. So half double crochet into the next six that you have coming in and then the next two will have two half double crochets and then there will be one here on the edge. This is the toe and then there will be two into this one, two into this one and then one into each except for the very last one there will be three half double crochets right in there. But before we continue let's mark this first one here that's on the other side. So let's just take our work here and let's just find where that is. So as we move forward in this project what I want you to do is that I want you to mark the toe. So right in the very edge is one, two, and three. It's the second one. Okay, it's the middle one of that group of three on the other side. And what I want you to do is that I want you to slip underneath the stitch work only and you could either use a stitch marker but I prefer yarn because I never run out of it. <laughs> Not that I have a problem or anything but uh, I just use this uh, piece of yarn and I'm gonna pull through and this will represent my toe as I go. So what I want to do is every time I come back here on this particular stitch I'll move it up every time so that I never lose where the front of the foot will be. So let's uh, come back and let's return and do round number two. So let's do round number two. We're gonna chain up two. Doesn't count as anything. It's just a builder and right where you're the same one that you did the join. What I want you to do is that I want you to half double crochet into that one. So just wrap the hook first and then coming into the same one pull through and pull through all three loops. That's a half double crochet. So we got five more to do after we do the first one. So let's do that. Let's start counting these out. So let's just do this is two and the next one is three Next one is four. Next one is five. Next one is six. Okay. So now in the next two we're gonna put two half double crochets in each and if you look at the diagram see how this uh, is the toe here. There's two stitches and then it's the toe. So we know that we're in the right stitch right now. So the next two are gonna have two half double crochets in each. So one and two and then the next one is going to have one and two. So we're now coming around the front of the foot. So the next one right in the toe area is just gonna be one half double crochet by itself and but before you can finish off the stitch, so finish that off, I want you to put, pull this through. So just slip your hook underneath that stitch and just grab that yarn and pull through and that will move up that line for you so that you know where it is next time. So let's come down the other side. So the first two are going to be half double crochets in each or it will be two of them. So one and two. And the next one is gonna be another two. So one and two. Okay and so now we're gonna half double crochet ourselves back to where we had come from and we're just gonna do something slightly different on the very last stitch. So in the very last stitch when we get there we're gonna put in three half double crochets into the same one. So we're morally focused on the front of the foot for this whole project. I've seen uh, booties where the back of the foot is just as important as the front for keeping counts. But this one's actually a pretty simple pattern. So I'm just half double crocheting myself back to the middle. Okay 
and in the very last stitch okay in the very last stitch which is the one that I am currently in I'm going to put in two or sorry three half double crochets. Just like that and then I'm just going to join it to the beginning half double crochet that I started with. So that was round number two. Like that. So that's what it looks like at this point. So we're now just gonna do one more round of growth. This is how small these things are. It's pretty cute. So now we're gonna start up chain up one and we're gonna single crochet in the first one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then the next three stitches will have two single crochets in each. There will be three right in the toe and we're gonna move the stitch marker to the middle one of the three when we get there. And then the first a set of three will have two single crochets and then each one of these coming back will be single crochet. And then all we just have to do is when we get back we look for the middle one of the, um, the three half double crochets put in three single crochets, single crochet in the final and then join it. So this is the last time it's gonna grow and then the rest of the other three rounds here will just be one single crochet in each in the back loops. So let's continue for round number three. So here is round number three that we're about to start. So see where the stitch marker is on the toe? So the three stitches prior to that is gonna have two single crochets in each and then three stitches after this is gonna have uh, two single crochets in each and then it's just one single in each up until we get to the middle one of the group of three here on the back and then that will be three single crochets. So if you look for tips like that it's a lot easier. So we're gonna chain up one to begin and then right when the same one that we did the join you're just gonna single crochet into this one. Okay and there's seven in a row if you wanna keep count. So that was one, two, this is gonna be three, four, five, six, and seven. So how do I know I'm right? Because I have three single crochets prior to the toe. So those two, uh, three are gonna get two single crochets each. So one and two. So do it again in the next one. So there'll be two into that one. So, so we've got one and two and then the next one. So there's three in a row like that. One and two I've been using a bigger hook off camera so moving to a smaller one. <laughs> it's been a bit of a challenge today. So the next one here in the middle one that's marked you're going to put in three single crochets but watch. You're gonna do one, two and before you continue insert your hook into that second one and grab that stitch marker again so you never lose that toe. Just pull it through and tighten everything back up. So that was the second one and come back into the same stitch and do three, uh, the third one. So you know that the toe is still there. So now you're going to do for the next three in a row be two single crochets. So one and two. The next one one and two and the next one is one and two. So there should be three in a row that are like that. Okay. So now we're just gonna single crochet ourselves back to the beginning and what we wanna look for is that middle one of the half double crochet that we did when we were doing the back end before. So you can either count out the stitches as per the diagram that I wrote for you or you can look for telltale signs of, of being able to see where your stitches are gonna go. Okay, so I'm seeing my group of three here. So this is the first one of the group of three. So I don't wanna do anything special, just be a single crochet. So this is the middle one that I'm about to do and so the middle one will have three single crochets. So one, two, and three. Whoops, three. And then there's just one stitch left after that and then we're just going to join it. We're just going to join it then with the beginning single crochet that we had started with. So that was round number three. So you can see it looks pretty cute. It looks re really small right? And so now we're gonna begin. It's gonna grow a little bit bigger but uh, this is the base sole at this point. 
So now your soul is complete. We just finished round number three. So we're gonna continue now for round number four. Chain up one and we're gonna single crochet in each of the back loops only. So it's gonna get a bit bigger because it's gonna uh, just stretch out these stitches that you've been putting into the same one. So round number four is just chain up one, one single crochet into the back loops only all the way back and then we do it again for five and then we turn and work and go in the other direction then for six and the back loops as well. So now what we have to do is go up for round number four. So we're gonna chain up one. So if you're new to crochet what happens is that there's two strands of string, right? So one, the first strand is called the front loop and the back strand that's furthest away from you is the back loop. Together they make up a stitch. So right, I just chained one already and I, right where the same one that you did the join, you wanna just dive into the back loops. Once you get used to it, it's pretty quick to go all around. So you're just gonna go in the back loop only and you're going to single crochet. This will create the line that appears in the bottom of the sole. So you're just gonna do the back loops only and this causes the material to bend when, uh, when it's being done. So this is what creates the neat look. So you're just gonna go in the back loop only one into each as you go all the way around and then I'll meet you at the other side of this. So just one single crochet in the back loop. As we continue around do not forget to move that toe center marker as you hit it and uh, you want to reposition that so that you can get it to be accurate each and every time. So you can see where it is. It's the next one here. So I'm gonna do it. So I'm just gonna dive into the back loop only. Pull through and then I'm just gonna pull this up and pull that stitch marker through. Tighten it back up and then keep on going. So we know where that's gonna be each and every time. So I'm just coming into the last one and then I'm just gonna join it to the beginning that we have. So just go right in there and pull through. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna do round number five. It's the same concept that you're doing. Chain up one, again the back loop only. Like there. And just continue to go around and you're gonna move up that stretch marker in the toe as you go around. And then what we're gonna do then is round number six. We are going to have to move that stitch marker once we get beyond round number six and I'll show you what to do at that point. So please just do another round of back loops only. So as you come back around you're still working in the back loops of course and then you're just going to join it to the top. So now we're going to do a, a total, uh, sorry, of round number six. So we're gonna turn our work. So before we've been chaining up one and going in this direction. We're gonna turn our work around and then go in the other direction. So we're gonna chain up one, same stitch that you did the join. Again the back loops only. You might have to be creative for that first one. Back loops only and you want to single crochet yourself all the way around once again. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna meet you at the end of this round because we have to reposition the toe stitch marker to be in the proper position before moving forward in today's tutorial. So just single crochet in the back loop only. So we're coming all the way back around still doing the back loops only. Just like so. And what we want to do is join with the slip stitch to the top of the first beginning crochet or single crochet. So right in the beginning. And now we have something to do prior to moving on. So now this is, is really quite cool, right? So you can see the shape is really coming to be. So what I want you to notice here, let me just pull this up to be a little bit bigger here. And what you're gonna notice is that when you crochet, do you see how it's kind of wandered off the center line? That's normal. Stitches never stay on top of each other. They always shift over just slightly. So what we have to do at this point is that we have to relocate the center. So what you have to just do is just look down the center line and just follow it straight up and do you see that it's kind of just one over. So what I want to do for this one is that I want to move out the stitch marker that was there and I want you to eye it up. Okay, so just looking at it straight down and just eye it up. Use your hook if you want to and that's where I'm gonna go. So I'm going to go into that stitch marker or that stitch there and move the marker over and that's now the new front of my foot. That matters because I'm gonna explain something to you in just a moment. So as we worked our way around we were moving up the stitch marker as I noticed here and what happens here is that the stitches always just kind of wander off the center point. So we just have just moved it over and right where we want to go is that once we moved it over we're gonna come to this chart here and this one is the upper moccasins. So what you want are looking at is round number six is the round that you just were in 
and this is already established in. So we've just moved in the stitch marker so it's CL for center line and so this one here is your center line and it's gonna tell you just a single crochet until you get to so many stitches prior to the center line. The center line even though it's kinda wacky in my little diagram never gets touched or moved. It's always the stitches prior to the center line. So what's gonna happen here is it will say go to the fifth stitch I think it's one, two, three, four, five. Go to the fifth stitch prior to the center line put those two together one single crochet in the next put the next two together sing center line will just be a single crochet the next two will be together one by itself the next two together and then single crochet yourself all the way to the to the back of the heel. So nothing special happens on the back it's all on the toe. So what we're doing is that we're gaining and putting the stitches together so that it forms over the top of the foot or in the toe area of the child. So let's move along to round number seven and let's begin that next. So if I were you or you were me I would count back the stitches so we can see that this is the center line here. So count back to the fifth. So one, two, three. Let's do that again. So one, two, three, four, and five. So it says to start the fancy footwork the fifth stitch from the center line. Okay so the center line is not included and I would just throw in a stitch marker here so that when you're crocheting around you know where to start and then after you get beyond the center line the first two are together the one by itself next two are together and then by itself all the way back to the center. So this is actually kind of a neat idea in order to do it. So let's begin round number seven. So we're going to chain up one and we're just going to go into the regular stitches as well. So and I just wanna verify that as well on my sheet here and it's just going into the regular um, stitches and you're just gonna single crochet until you get to the fifth stitch prior to the center line. So it's kinda like really not a lot of counting. I've seen booties where you count everything and it's just like it's easy to go wrong but these particular ones uh, the designer did an excellent job on just trying to be simple about it but also getting a really cute look at the end of the project as well. So each stitch is just getting a single crochet until we hit that first stitch marker that I have to show me. So it's kind of neat. Sometimes it's better just to hold it back from you and mark your stitches than it is to sometimes count. So we know that this, this is the first stitch marker. So this is gonna have how to be two together for a single crochet. So you're gonna go into the next stitch, pull through and hold that on your hook. You're gonna go to the next stitch, pull through, hold it on the hook. You have three pull through all three loops and that was two together. So the next one is just one single crochet by itself and then the next two, see this is the center line, the next two, the final is gonna be two together. And then here's the center. So what I want you to do to keep an eye on that center I want you to move it up. So we will move it up here just like that and now after the center line the first two are together And then the next one's by itself. The next two are together. And then the remaining all the way around back to where you had started is just single crochet. So that was round number seven really. The nice thing about it is that you're eliminating out stitches so the project will get faster and faster for you to complete because there's less stitch work involved every time you're going around. So you're gonna go right into the very last one which is next and then just join it with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. And that was round number seven. So let's go back to our chart next. So now we're ready to go for round number eight. So what happens in this one here is that you have to look for the fourth stitch prior to the center line. So you're gonna count back so one, two, three and four and so the four stitches the two become together the next two are together the center lines by itself and then the next two are together and the next two together and single crochet. So we'll, let's pull up our project then and let's locate our center line. So here's our center line here. So this is the stitch marker from the last round. So all we're just gonna do is count four. So one, two, three and four. Do not count that center line. One, two, three and four and this will be the first time that you'll run into it as you come. So you'll notice I'm not marking the other side because you know what to do after center line. It's just a matter of finding it the first time. So let's begin to do round number eight. So we're just gonna put it back onto the hook, chain up one, one single crochet into each until you get to that first stitch marker and then you're gonna put those together. So 
Um, you'll be hearing in the video a slight hum. That's not something I can control. Unfortunately, my neighbor is lawn mowing his lawn. I've got all the windows shut, but he's got a loud mower. <laughs> okay, so continuing along to the first stitch marker, which is coming up. And uh, here we go. So the stitch marker is next. So now that we're running into the stitch marker, the next two are gonna be toge together. And then the next two after that are together. And then your center line should be next, which it is. So that one is still gonna be by itself. And then we're just going to come in and move that center line up. And then the next two after that will be two together. That's after the center line. And the next two are together after that. So it happens twice. And now you're just gonna single crochet yourself all the way back to the beginning, which is just around the corner from this here. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna finish this uh, round off. I'm gonna wait for my neighbor to finish up and then I'll be back in just a moment to be able to continue along in today's tutorial. So just before I leave you, just make sure you slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet and then we'll be ready done to move on to the next round, which is round number nine. So we're now back here and we're gonna go on for round number nine. So we're gonna do four stitches prior to the center line. So one, two, three, four, and we're gonna mark it again and then we're gonna put the two together, two together, center line, two together, two together, and then keep on going around for round number nine. So we're kind of almost done this whole thing. So what we want to do is come back to the sample. Let's begin to mark our center line once again. So let's move our last stitch marker here. So we have our center line here. I moved it last time I was here. So one, two, three, and four right here. And then I want to put in another stitch marker there. So this is round number nine. See how stitch markers really can help you. So let's begin to do round number nine. So getting this back up into your hands, chain up one and single crocheting, which includes that one that you did the slip stitch with at the beginning. And you're just gonna work your way around until you get to the first stitch marker. These are pretty adorable, these little moccasins. I think people are gonna love this particular pattern. And it's free too, so you can never go wrong. So coming and uh, the stitch marker is coming up real soon. There we go. So the stitch marker is up next. So that one plus its buddy next door is gonna become two together. And then the next two are together. Like so. And then here is the stitch marker for the center. That one's gonna be by itself. Move up that stitch marker while you're there. Then you'll never lose it. And then we're gonna continue along. So the next two are gonna be coming together. So after the center line, they're together. And then the next two are together. And then the remaining on this one here is going to be one single crochet in each. So when you get back all the way around, you're just gonna slip stitch it to the top of the first single crochet that you had right there. So let's move along now. That was round number nine. So moving along now, round number 10, very easy. Just chain up one and you're just gonna do one single crochet all the way around. I would recommend moving up that center line as you get there, but it's just one single in each as you move around. So I'm back here on the project. I'm gonna pull out the last stitch marker that indicated. I'm gonna leave this center line one in there and I'm just gonna chain up one and do one single crochet in each stitch all the way around, nothing fancy, and then meet me back at the end of this round and then we're gonna start doing the cuff area next. So now just coming all the way back around, just still one single crochet in each. And I went across the front and I moved my stitch marker and we're going to join it and then that's it. So we're now going to start creating the cuff after this but we have to finish off this yarn first. So let's just uh, snip this yarn here. Just leave an extra long tail just in case and just pull through the loop here and that's it. So we're gonna move on to doing the cuff and you can see it's actually super, super adorable. So now that I fastened off, I wanna leave here and I want to just keep an eye on that center line here. So just lay it down so that you can see it flat and so I would move it over just one 
just pull it out. Just keeping it looking good. Okay, so this is the front of my foot up top and I want to just mark the middle one with this new stitch marker so that I can keep an eye on that going forward and we're gonna need that. And uh, the cuff is done in rows and not rounds and so that will become the, the marker that we're going to work towards in the future. So let's begin to do the cuff area. So let's begin to do the cuff area and I'm going to create another piece of yarn here and create a slip knot to begin. So right where I want to do is that this is the center line here. We're going to skip that one and we're gonna go into the back loop only. Okay, so just go into the back loop of the next stitch that's right beside it and going in this direction and I want to attach it. So just detach just by pulling it through and then I'm gonna chain one and single crochet into the same loop and that will get me started here. So what I'm gonna do is just lay down the center line here or sorry, lay down the straggler. See the other straggler that you did have? Lay that down as well and when you go into the stitches you're just gonna go into the back loop only. Just lay those stragglers down on into position and those will get stuck underneath and then you don't have to worry about it later. If you prefer to use a darning needle then that's up to you and you can use that as well. So just pull those a little bit snug so that they're nice there and we can fix that later. So continuing just to work around on the back loop only and what I want you to do is that I want you to stop to the stitch that's prior to this center line on the other side. So when you come back all the way around you're gonna stop. And you don't need to carry those stragglers too far, just about an inch or two would be good and continuing in the back loop only. Now I think this is good so I'm just gonna tuck that tail in away and I'll deal with it later and continue along. So it gets a little bit cumbersome when you have to hide in tails like that but you know the, the difference of, of a finished project especially if a child's gonna be kicking these off. I don't know if they'll kick it off at this particular age group but uh, I haven't had kids that young or I haven't had kids period but haven't had kids that young so I don't know if kids start <laughs> even off their booties or not. So let's uh, begin. I think it's not until you get to two and then they learn the word no. <laughs> Good luck I'm parenting. So here we go and continuing along just in the back loops only and I wanna stop in the one prior to the center line. So that one here is so I got one more to go. And that's it. Okay, so that was round number one of doing the cuff. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna get rid of these stragglers now that I was dragging up underneath and then those will be out of the way and clean up the look that we have. So now that we have established um, our middle area here we can pull out that stitch marker for the middle toe because now we're just gonna be working in the rows. We just had to establish it for the very first time. So we can kind of clean up the look of this and now really work on finishing this up. So let's move along to row number two and there's only th a couple more, a few more rows after this. So let's begin row number two. We're going to chain up one and again back loops only. The back loops is what gives a texture. Just dive into the back loop only and I want you just to go one single crochet in each all the way to the other side. So it's easy and so I will meet you at the end of this rotation. So I'll come around and stop right here. So I'm just coming up to the end of the other side and then all I'm just gonna do is turn my work. So turn my work and let's start round number three. So round number three just chain up one again back loops. So what I want you to do is continue just to do this back and forth until it measures a total of um, at one and a half inches for the cuff. Okay so the cuff area should be one and a half inches coming up from this area. So you're just gonna go back and forth until you get to that and then you're gonna be able to fasten on or fasten off and then just weave in your ends. And if you want to create the pom-poms to finish the look you're more than welcome to do so. There's great pom-pom makers and there's also a description in the in the actual pattern and how to do it. There's also tutorials on that as well. So what I'm gonna do is just leave this with you. So just go back and forth continuing on the back uh, loops only and then get it one and a half inches and I'll see you back here in a moment. So I'm just finishing up total. I got my one and a half inches in and all I'm just gonna do now is just trim my yarn here and I'm gonna run it through a darning needle. This is one of the parts that you do need a darning needle with because you really can't hide it well underneath stitches. 
So even if you try to weave it in with your hook, it'll fall out. So what you wanna do is grab your buddy, the, the darning needle, and all you can do is just, if you go back and forth underneath the stitches, so just glide it up underneath the stitches. Okay, just don't try to impede that outside here. Just go across one, and just pull it snug but not crazy tight and then go in the other direction for two. A lot of people make the mistake and try to ruin that, that nice line and then go back in the other direction and for a third time. And then all you can just do now is just trim it right down to the project itself. And there you go. So this is how you do the booties. Let me back out the camera here. And so this is how to do the booties. They're really quite nice. Now you just have to shape them and you just have to roll down the cuff. And so the cuff has texture because you are working the back loops only. And just like the model's photo, as you can see, fits in the palm of your hand. And they are so adorable. So until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. Enjoy your new baby moccasins called the Wee Crochet Moccasins. And I think you'll have a lot of fun with this particular idea. And these make for a baby, a, a great baby uh, shower gift as well. Till next time, have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. <music>